Hi there. So uh, we got a drone here. It's a Pan uh, Phantom 4 Pro Plus. And um, as you can see here, we had a hard landing. And uh, it basically damaged the landing skid, the landing gear. On the left side only, it looks like. And the compass is bad. So we're going to get into that, and uh, we're going to get this thing back up and running, functioning right. Hang in there and stick around. We're going to get after it. So, yeah, on this deal, we got some tools here. We're going to start out with this carpet knife to get this, uh, what is, uh, looks like, or feels like electrical tape. And... Uh, so basically, to get the diagnosis, it's already been put on the grass, and uh, we've, we've ran some systems, and we've determined that the uh, one of the compasses is out. The compass on this side, of course, because it's taken this hard landing, and that has either disconnected inside the, the compass or has, in fact, uh, broke it. So... Uh, so we know that, and so um, we've got that figured out. Now we can go ahead and, and take this off and see what's going on underneath this tape. And this stuff's pretty sticky and messy. It's been, you know, heated up enough to where I don't know if this is just going to peel off. It may peel off here, which might actually be okay to just unwrap this instead of actually cutting it off uh what a mess okay and this works this was this was a quick a quick fix that kept everything in operation for a period of time until the operator just basically quit using it and uh it has not been running, so we've updated the firmware in the remote, in the copter, and got everything back up to online. And uh, this is a great drone. This is the uh, Phantom 4 Pro Plus. And uh, comes with this remote, which is the, uh, I think it's the GL300E, which has the screen, comes with the screen. We might talk about that a little bit later, how to get around some of the things of not being able to use third-party apps. We might do that at, at the end when I wrap, wrap this repair up. But uh, the reason we want to get this replaced is, first of all, we don't, we don't, we want this, this skid to be actually useful. And, um, and it looks like, it looks like, uh, we've lost in here, we've lost the cover and we've, looks like we've probably lost the cover on this, uh, on this side as well. Um, those probably just popped off on impact. And uh, I'm going to work on this a little bit, clean this up, and uh, we'll get back. All right, cool. So we got the most of that stuff off. It just kind of, you just kind of rub on it, and it kind of sticks together, kind of kind of sticks to itself like gum. And uh, you kind of just push it into one general location. Stuff comes, and then you, you kind of pick it off. It needs a little bit more work. But... Uh, hard to tell just by looking inside whether or not we're disconnected. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go in there and uh, and take this baby apart and find out what's going on. And to do that, we're gonna use this. This is a portable telecommunication toolkit. You can get these on Amazon. This is this is the go-to for this. And um, that's what we're talking about right there. It's got all those. So uh, we're going to get on that.
Okay, this is where we're at. We're in pieces. We've been waiting a few days. We got our parts in today, and this is uh, uh, from Cloud City Drones out of Rhode Island, I think. And these are the parts that we received. And um, so we'll get to it. Okay, so here's the new compass skid antenna. And uh, it has come with the extension cable that has to get attached in there. They don't do that for you. So you got to take this extension cable here. You can't put it on the leg or the skid first. So the reason is, is because it, it won't feed down through the aircraft's base. So it's got to be fed up through this way, through the smaller end, in order to get it connected. And so that's a little trick that needs to be remembered. And there you go, pops through here and now we can connect it. We can feed it in here and connect it and then route it. You can see these little uh, notches where the wires, where it connects. And the best way to, to figure that out is to I believe that goes to the inside. So we'll have it facing this way. Let's see if that And there it goes. I could feel it, not, the little notch click. And so I feel pretty good about that. You gotta be pretty uh, finesse it in there because it's, uh, you know, microchips and, and plastic and wiring. So uh, pretty delicate stuff. And it's it, it felt like it went in there good for me. So we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so the other thing is, is these need to go through this space here. And this antenna cable goes through with the compass cable. Through here. And uh, these bays will be on the inside facing this way. We'll feed that through these two holes and then route that. Okay, so I had initially labeled uh, one of my wires in order to help me get back to the beginning again. So we're gonna take this label off and transfer it onto the same cable that's going into that slot. Saves us a lot of frustration later trying to remember what exactly we did. And um, as you can see from the old one, this one was still here. And this was the uh, broken side. So we know that this was the side. If, if in this case, this is a lighter gray than this darker gray. But with the new part, they're both the same color. So... I kept the old parts, which is always a good idea, and how they came off in order to, to retrace my steps. So uh, the new one, uh, the missing part is on this side. So we put it back on that side and we'll continue routing. Okay, so we're, we're dropped in antenna and compass. And uh, over here you can see these were the old screws that came and uh, were ultimately broken out of the, out of the bays that uh, where the where the antenna and the compass cables route through. 
and you can you can see here that uh, the screws are still uh, in the plastic uh, but those pieces were broken so the skid was was virtually useless and uh, not sturdy continue on that way so another reason for uh, replacing probably uh, just as important as uh, replacing the compass so we're going to use these new screws that came with the kit and we're going to pop those into the bays and uh, we'll only be using four of the screws since we're only uh, replacing the uh, left skid and uh, we'll check back with the next step okay that was about the hardest thing i've ever had to do but uh, we got the compass and antennas seated back in uh, the four slots and now we've got to put this cap back on here and uh, all this stuff is it's basically micro so we're going to use this phillips tiny tiny little screw to get those back end seated all right so now we got we got the uh, we got the gimbal plugged back in and now it's all about getting this tab we're getting so close right now we're going to switch uh bits here and i've got back to the phillips is what it's going to take to get this secure tab on placing these these phillips are super super tiny micro Careful not to lose the screw, even though we got magnetic. One. Let's get the next one in. Gimbal's about 650 bucks to replace, so you gotta be super careful. And you wanna take it off to get it out of the way to do to do what we just did on the compass repair. There we go. Nice and snug. Not over torqued. And we did a visual inspection. Everything looks good on, on all the other parts inside. So uh, we're almost there. All right, we got the gimbal back on, and then we're just going to pop in. We had to change bits again, and we're just going to pop in one screw for now because we're going to power everything on and check it out before we put the rest of the screws in. So we're almost there.